Hi everybody, it's Stephen Brook and welcome to my YouTube channel on architectural photography and composition. If you find these videos helpful, take a moment and subscribe. It's free and it's anonymous. I've entitled this, Everything is Compositional, Striving for Perfection in Your Architectural Photographs. I'm talking about striving for a level of perfection that is achievable. If you've listened to Miles Davis's Kind of Blue, if you've seen Michelangelo's Pietà, if you've seen Raphael's School of Athens at the Vatican, or listened to Mozart's piano sonatas and the Jupiter Symphony, if you've heard Bach's B minor mass, or have visited uh, the Kimball Museum by Louis Kahn, then you know that that is possible. There's a wonderful line in the movie Amadeus when the sort of so-so composer Antonio Salieri is given a portfolio of Mozart's work by his wife. And he looks at the work and he says, this is music that is finished as no music is ever finished. And that line really stuck with me because I think in the days of film that may not have been possible because you were limited by not being able to really fine tune your work. You could get it a long way, but unless you were doing black and white photography and dealing with black and white prints where you could burn and dodge and retouch, if you were dealing with color film as we all were uh, with four by five and even with slides, color retouching was really difficult. So if things weren't quite right in the landscape, there wasn't much you could do about it. You could trim and prune, but not everything. You could not fine tune everything. But now it's possible to achieve that level of perfection. You need the technical skills and you need camera and software skills. But I think those are the easiest part of the equation. Uh, for what you need to achieve excellence and perfection. You can learn your camera and you should. It should be like a musical instrument in your hands. You should not have to think about how to handle each and every uh, aspect of your, of your instrument. Some moment, wonderful moment of light happens and uh, you, you're fumbling to try to figure out how, you wanna get past that. And also you should learn as much software technique as you can. That's the easy part, I think. I think more importantly is visual intelligence, art history study. And I've been uh, suggesting that the more time you spend with the great painters and engravers, the better your work will be. And I have a video that's six artists you should study for architectural photography. There are a lot more and I want to do a couple of more videos uh, with artists that are important for landscape, artists that are important for still life, artists that are important for interiors. I think these are all wonderful and um, the response to the first one was so good, I want to continue with that vein. So the more time that you spend studying the great painters and engravers, I think the better your work will be. Painters like Vermeer and Hopper established standards of perfection that really should guide us all. And like Salieri, when he was talking about Mozart's music, said you couldn't take out or put in one note without the whole thing falling apart. If you look carefully and study Vermeer or study Hopper, that's the same thing. You can't change any one element without making the whole image somewhat less. And this is the goal that I, that I personally try hard to achieve and what I want to encourage you to do as well. Everything is compositional. That means anything in your image has to help the composition or it will hurt it. Leonardo said something like that, that if it doesn't help the composition, it hurts the composition, which means carefully photographing and then spending as much time as needs to, as you need to spend in post-production. The creativity comes when you're setting up the shot, thinking what time of day, what angle, what position, how you arrange all the elements. Every little table is a still life. Every bookshelf is its own little still life. That's where your creativity comes into play. But what I'm talking about in this pursuit of perfection, this is what the intelligence community calls tradecraft. 
For us, post-production is our trade craft and requires real concentration and requires the third level, the third element of success. And I don't mean to be preachy, but it means willpower. You have to really want to do this. So that means removing anything and everything that is unsightly in your image. Think about it if you were a painter. Would you, would you have that in your painting? If the answer is no, you need to figure a way to get it out of your photograph. Wires, cords, any kind of detritus, anything that doesn't complement your picture. Back in the Byzantine days of film, we would have assistants that would go out with pruning shears and gloves to pick up garbage. If there was a stain on the wall, you'd have to get somebody to find some painter to go paint that out because you couldn't do anything with it post-production because there was no post-production. Now you can do all of that. You can fix everything. Here's a really good example. This is Miami City Hall, which is a wonderful, used to be the old Pan Am building. And it's a wonderful building. And in my photograph of it, I put arrows here where you can see all the stuff that really doesn't belong, including a car, reflection of a car. I've got um, lightning rods. I've got bits of the air conditioning unit. I've got signage. I don't know what that is. I've got Again, I'm not sure what any of these little things are, but none of them have anything to do with the architecture and the architectural design. So they're gone. I took out every single one of them. Here again, these are all these little elements and there are a few more. Now they're all gone and I have a clean, beautiful shot of the Miami City Hall without all this other stuff in there. Now, is this tedious? You bet. It takes a lot of time to do it, but it's worthwhile because you can achieve a level of perfection in your image that you couldn't do before. Make sure when you do this, you view your image at 100% or greater because sometimes you don't see the little junk that's in there and you need to look really carefully, 100% so that you can see, wow, and I've got wires here that I have to take out. You have to take out all the stakes that hold up the trees when you, and that's a pain, but you have to do it. Sometimes you need to adjust your position to avoid impossible retouching situations. And one of them is, it's, you can get rid of wires, you just have to take the time to do it. What is difficult to recreate is the corner of a building to make it look correct. So I, position myself in a spot I ordinarily would not, I wouldn't have taken the spot because this corner is a little bit too close to the center. But if I go too far to the right, it's no good. If I go too far to the left, this is um, right on the corner. So I picked a spot that I knew when I came back to the studio, I would be able to get rid of all of the wires in, and also get rid of this power pole and make a nice clean shot and still not have to recreate the corner of the building, which I would not have been able to do as successfully. Better to move, show the corner, and then deal with all of this junk. How long did this take? My guess is at least three, four hours worth of retouching, but I can't give my client a photograph that looks like this. They can hire anybody to do that. If they are hiring me to do this work, this is what they're expecting and this is what I want to give them. Landscape requires particular attention to detail because some of the stuff in the foreground you can get rid of, you can have somebody pick away some branches and leaves, but once you get up into the tree line, it's much more difficult. And like studying the great painting and engraving masters, to get a sense of what this should look like, I recommend you study the great bonsai masters and see how they handle the edge of their pieces in relationship to the sky. This is so lyrical, so beautiful, so musical. There isn't one little branch that's out of place. Why? Because they have these tiny little scissors and they sit and they work on it from all angles to achieve perfection. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that the closer something is to the edge of the picture frame, the stronger it gets, the more important it gets for better or worse. If you have something hanging in the edge of your image, your eye is going to jump right to it. 
So please, if you have a situation like this where you don't have a good sky, you say, okay, I'm going to frame this with some detritus hanging in. Please don't do that. It's tacky. It doesn't look good. I see this all the time. This is not a way to create depth in your image. It's not a way to frame your image. You're just putting junk in there. Better for, let's just say, this is what you were stuck with, Go to the original, don't do that. Have your original image without these trees in here. I have a video on how to repair a bad sky. Fix the sky and maybe crop in a little bit tighter rather than hanging stuff in your image. And when you take a picture, if you see stuff hanging in, get rid of it. Or if you are gonna use foliage to frame your image, do it with a positive compositional intention. What I've done here with the Frick Museum, this is framed by the dense foliage along New York's Fifth Avenue. And it really says something about the location of the Frick. But I was careful, the trees block some of the other buildings, but I make sure, um, and I've taken some out, that the, the Frick itself, which is, my, which is the building that I'm photographing, um, does not have anything breaking, breaking its plane. The only thing breaking the plane are the trees down here in the courtyard that belong there. Let's take a look at this particular landscape photo. I, this photograph was done, by the way, not for the architect, but for, for the landscape architect. On first look, it looks pretty good. But there are a lot of things in here that aren't good. And I put arrows in here to indicate all the stuff that isn't good. This little these branches coming in from the side. There's one in here that that doesn't give me enough separation between this palm tree and the rest of it. These bits of foliage that break the plane of the roof really spoil the sense of, of completion of uh, the architecture. They don't belong there either. And also, I want you to look at the edges of your image. Any of these little white dots, consider if this were a black and white photo, you would spot those out. So I want you to look at the edge of your image and anything that is not compositional, get rid of it. Let me show you. Let me go back to, this is the image without anything taken out, and here's the completed image. And I want you to look first in this area and see what happens when you get rid of the little dots. All of a sudden, these shapes start to look compositional. They start to look structural. Look over here. Here and here, gone. Look at the roof line, and now also the tree. This stuff on the side of the tree is in compositional, and also this tree is sitting in front of the building. When I get rid of all of that, the sense of depth increases, which is what I'm trying to do. Again, we are dealing with a three-dimensional world and we're trying to make it into two dimensions. And if you don't do things in your photograph and post-production to give increased sense of depth, you aren't doing everything that you, can, that you should be doing. So look down in here. I want to emphasize the sculptural nature It makes a big difference but it takes time to do that, but it's so worth doing. For interiors, it's very important to get rid of wires in particular. Now, some places like, this is a medical facility, they do not like you touching their stuff. And so when you photograph it, know that you're going to get rid of that. And then here's the, these wires hanging down, you're not gonna miss those. No one's gonna look at this image and say, hey, aren't there supposed to be wires there? Now these big honkers, those you can't get rid of. Those are almost impossible to get rid of, but they really are part of the machinery. So unless the guy that makes these wires is paying your bill, you need to get rid of all of that. Same thing in, in, in any of the interiors, residential interiors, Look, your, look over your picture very carefully. Get rid of wires that hang down from, from uh, lamps and from um, electrical equipment. Try to get rid of as much of it as you can before you take the shot. But if you can't get rid of it, know that you're gonna have to do that post-production. Retail spaces with hundreds of elements, 
usually require hours and hours of preparation. The more you do ahead of time, the less you're going to have to do in, in Photoshop and post-production. Something like this, this was a, a women's accessory. We took everything out of there and then put each individual item back in. It would have been impossible. We would have hundreds of little tags to get rid of. And this was much easier to do it this way. It took less time to set this up this way than it would have done in post-production. There's another line that captivated me the first time I heard it. And that's in the movie, uh, The Last Samurai. And Captain Nathan Algren was an alcoholic, cynical army officer who was on duty in Japan and found himself in the company of um, a samurai uh, group. And he said, from the moment they wake, they devote themselves to the perfection of whatever they pursue. Whether it was bonsai, this is um, Kobayashi, who's a great bonsai master. Um, this is team master Genshitsu, um, calligraphy master. She's wonderful, uh, Aoi Yamaguchi. All of these great artists strive for perfection. Whether they achieve it is not the point. They believe it's possible and they strive to achieve that level of perfection. In the days of film, this was not as easily open to us. Now, with digital technology, we can sit alongside of Vermeer. We can sit alongside of Piranesi. We can fine tune our images to a level we never could have before. And I want to encourage you to look at your work that carefully and try to strive for that level of perfection. And remember, everything is compositional. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again.